crazy big storm rolling down the west coast of the United States. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis back with you. We are going to talk about that storm crushing blizzard coming to the Sierra Nevadas and flooding rain in the lower elevations. But we're also going to break down what's going on in the plains. Of course, we have the drought out there. Big time wildfires erupted yesterday in parts of the panhandle of Texas. So we're going to show you that from a satellite perspective and some insane video that firefighters went through as they were trying to get through to help get out there put out those fires and then that same system that is bringing the cold back to the northern tier of the country is continuing to push to the east we're going to break that down stick around to the end of the video we're going to have the nationwide and canada look at your higher resolution future radar and those temperatures if you want to stay updated on all things weather as we venture through the rest of quote unquote winter and getting into the severe weather season, we had some strong storms last night. You have to hit subscribe. Of course, we have you covered through hurricane season as well. Please do that. And if you happen to find this content helpful, give it a thumbs up. We'd love to also know where you are tuning in from. All right. On to the winter weather side of this big time system. Blizzard warnings here. This is the color that we're looking for here. That's that red color right up at the top of your screen. Blizzard warnings have been issued by the National Weather Service for most of the Sierra Nevadas all the way through Mammoth Lakes. That's going to be South Lake Tahoe as well, just outside of Reno. On the California side as well, winter storm warnings in pink there where the wind isn't going to be as bad but still pretty windy and we have winter storm warnings for northern idaho winter weather advisories for boise in that blue there north of elko we have winter storm watches that goes all the way toward yellowstone national park toward jackson hole salt lake city our winter weather advisory or our winter storm watch uh, just to the north of the city into the higher elevations out there so big time storm system rolling down the coast i will show you that in just one second First, though, I wanted to just show you the insane snowfall coming. And again, this is fairly common in terms of getting crushed with this snow for us in the Sierras. We all know it when we get these big storms rolling down the coast, these atmospheric rivers setting up, that we can get blasted over a few day period. This is snowfall from Thursday through Monday. This is going to be ending on March 4th. The core of the storm coming from Friday into Saturday before gradually subsiding. But look at this, 70 inches of snow just about in South Lake Tahoe about 50 inches uh, in places like Mammoth Lake into Cedar Crest. It's going to be where you see the kind of the color table almost being exceeded here, where these higher peaks are and the darker grays that are popping up. That's where we can eclipse 100 inches of snow. Again, the official forecast from the National Weather Service in Sacramento, 5 to 10 feet of snow above 5,000 feet. So again, we're talking big time crushing snow, and that is not including the drifts again. A lot of that snow is going to be blowing around. It's going to be really hard to measure that. But again, 10 feet, that's 120 inches of snow. Big time stuff. And again, that's falling in about a four-ish day time frame. Look at the wind, and this is why we have the blizzard component. Remember, the blizzard isn't about the amount of snow can fall. You can get a blizzard whenever you don't have snow falling at all. If there's enough wind to blow some of that light powder around, we call that a ground blizzard. That is not what this is. We're going to have, again, potentially up to 10 feet of snow falling in the Sierras, in addition to near hurricane force wind gusts. So here are the gusts again. This is the model forecast. Look at that. 30 to 60 mile per hour winds in South Lake Tahoe, uh, Bumblebee getting to 30 mile per hour gust. There you go. This is tomorrow. This is February 29th now for the perspective for the date. Reno gusting to 32, South Lake Tahoe pushing 60 miles an hour. And again, those wind gusts getting up to 50 to 60 miles an hour all the way from Reno and then into the higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada. So again, we're talking drifts. That could be greater than 10 feet if you don't get the 10 feet of snow in those higher elevations again. But the official forecast, again, 5 to 10 feet of snow. So some really, really crazy stuff. Now, the worst stuff here, of course, the snowfall, it's all fun and games for the, sn for the skiers, the snowboarders. If you have to travel, I mean, don't. It's going to be impossible to travel, literally white out conditions. But look at the amount of moisture coming in, especially in the lower elevation. Six to seven inches of rain, Newport into Eureka. It's going to be flooding there. We're going to have the wind as a result of this storm system as well, even in the lower elevations. So we're looking for power outages, unfortunately. We're looking for down trees and the potential for mudslides, landslides, things of that nature. And again, you see that bright yellow there. Again, that's all going to be snow in the higher elevations. We just took a look at how much snow we can expect. Upper level pattern. Here is our big system causing all of this. You see this huge dip in the jet stream. This is our big upper low 
hanging out uh, in the Gulf of Alaska right there. It's going to be sliding down the west coast of the United States. And as it does so, it is tapping into all of this Pacific moisture, taking it and just slamming it right on inland. And then with the mountains being there, we call this orographic lift. It lifts all of that moisture, helps to cool it condense it further, and then really enhance those precip rates. So that is why, again, even though these are astonishing numbers, these are crushing snowfall numbers, we've seen this before, and I don't want to say it's common. We maybe see this once every other winter, depending upon the setup. But we can get these setups like this because the mountains are there and we have that moisture source. You just need a storm to kind of displace that Pacific moisture inland. That's what we have going on. And that sets up Thursday into Friday. And you see that pinwheeling. There is our upper low. We continue to blast the west coast of the United States from Washington into Oregon. Then, of course, the west coast of California sliding on through. So, again, this is going to be a significant system. Our upper low kind of goes through there, and then that's why we have those winter storm watches that I showed you earlier uh, for places like Wyoming and in for, for us into Idaho and western Montana because that upper low kind of migrates and pushes its way back into southwest Canada and then lifts some of that moisture inland. So that is what we are going to be watching here. We could use some moisture in Texas in the plains. Of course, you all know it if you're living here. We have the drought. I want to show you the visible satellite imagery. And again, it, the wind from that system that reinforced the cold or brought back the cold after our record-breaking warmth in the northern plains and upper Midwest, that kind of set the stage for this to happen. Of course, if anything gets going, which it unfortunately did, it blows those embers and blows those flames all over the place and really fuels it. I'm showing you the visible satellite image from yesterday as this really big fire got going towards Canadian Texas. And I want you to look all this stuff you see out here that is the cloud cover but when there's no clouds around the visible satellite can pick up on bigger fires and i want to show you that here if you look closely we're going to be focused right on through here i'll get my line out of the way to show you but i'm just kind of focusing your attention where to look once i remove the line we're going to be looking here here and here so take that mental picture and then look really really close watch what happens as the loop starts you see that faint Right there, you see more smoke and more smoke. I'll remove the lines once again and let this loop play through. The video, uh, some firefighters going through this area and the response is crazy. You see the fire whirls coming through. Uh, you just, I mean, scary to drive through. You can't see anything and then you can just see the embers all over the windshield. So again, some crazy video coming out of the panhandle of Texas. We could use some rain going through. Now the wind is going to subside a little bit in these areas. Of course, out west again for us, in Nevada and California, where we don't have the blizzard warnings, we do have high wind warnings. So that includes us in Reno, in southeast Oregon, also in the Great Falls area. Uh, toward Casper, Wyoming, we have high wind warnings. And then toward Syracuse, New York. So that's from that system that we showed you that's going to be blasting the west. This is the system that's bringing the cold back to the east and already did so to the upper Midwest. There are the winter weather advisories from Houston into San Antonio all the way down into Nashville parts of Kentucky, uh, into parts of the Deep South as well, Alabama into Georgia, Mississippi, and then no the Northeast, New England, we are getting involved in some of those uh, strong wind gusts as well. That's why we have wind advisories in play. All right, the North American view here, Un United States and Canada view again, temperatures in Celsius for Canada here. The chill is back. Of course, not a ton of snow with this. We did get a lot of snow in places like uh, northwest Minnesota and parts of the Dakotas for a short time. Again, winter coming back for a short time. It's not going to last long, though. You see it there, 14 below in uh, Moosonee, 26 below Celsius, uh, 19 degrees below zero early tomorrow morning in the Twin Cities. Uh, cold, again, St. Louis, 27 degrees. We'll fast forward now as we move into the next couple of days. And again, we are going to keep that chill around again really towards the end of the work week before we try to warm things back up i want to end with this i like to show you the wide view here so that you can plan out your day plan out the next couple of days this is going to be the high resolution future radar and we do see still some snow trying to push its way into toronto moosini uh, labrador city the rain though for ottawa ramuski New York City in Roanoke, Virginia. That's that system that, again, brought us the severe weather towards Chicago, Indiana, into the Mid-Atlantic last night, early today. That gets out of here and then allows all that cold we just showed you to kind of push on through. Uh, Halifax, we get some light snow as well into Nova Scotia. 
All right, we haven't really talked about the southeast corner of the country, but we are going to turn things unsettled again because of the El Nino pattern. Sorry, I'm kind of rapid firing here, but there is a lot to break down, a lot to talk about, and I want to try to get to as many spots as I can. We get it right here, El Nino pattern coming our way, and then we get all that moisture to come through the deep south and then back into Florida over the next couple of days. Of course, here is that high-resolution future radar of all of that moisture slamming the west coast into Seattle. Look at all the heavy snow and the dark blue there in the Sierras. Again, could get 10 feet plus of snow out in that timeline or out in that in our, in our part of the country. There we go, Friday, this is 9 o'clock, and that moisture starts to expand a little bit further into the mid-Atlantic as well and into the northeast. By that time, the cold, of course, is going to be gone, and we are not talking about a lot, if any, snow getting into the northeast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Please post in the comments where you're tuning in from. And again, if you want to stay updated on the weather as we venture through the rest of winter, get into spring severe weather season, and then eventually hurricane season, you've come to the right place. Thank you guys a ton for the support. Great to meet all the newcomers. Thank you for finding the channel. We'll catch you next time.